Kelly Shaw, Rocky Mountain Sasquatch Organization. I'm up in northwest Montana following up on some Bigfoot sighting reports. Beautiful big sky country, the treasure state, and uh, we're going to bring you some on-site Bigfoot sighting locations. So uh, keep on watching. Jenny and I are going to hike in a Bigfoot sighting hotspot in North Montana. Some thick stuff, the trail's starting to overgrow. That's definitely a type of berry. That's the one that I picked in salmon. Thought it was a raspberry. That one looks more like a raspberry than the ones you were picking in California. Oh, not salmon berries. When we were in salmon and I picked that one berry, you told me that it was something else. Thimbleberry. Oh, it's a thimbleberry. That's what it is. Uh huh. You picked some thimbleberries up by the old uh, ghost town. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's what it is. for bears plenty of food right here for them. I know. They could be just laying right over there and we wouldn't even be able to see it. The bushes are just so thick. Looks like a raspberry. You think it's one of those thimbleberries? I don't know. Oh, the way it came off. I think it's a thimbleberry. Yeah, it doesn't taste like raspberry. Well, the raspberry doesn't leave behind this. See how you can tell it's a thimbleberry? A raspberry just pulls right off the bush. Oh. I'm sure there's lots of other ways you can tell the difference, but that's a thimbleberry. They taste a lot like a raspberry, don't they? That melts. I don't know what those are. Thimbleberries? It's just smaller ones? No, they're not. Those are round. They look almost like tomatoes. Little baby tomatoes. I don't even know if those are edible. I guess I'll put a little on my tongue and see if my body agrees. They're like a tomato inside. The insides are sweet. Right here. Yeah, berries equal bears. I know. There's a dugout tree stump. <laughs> yeah, an animal's been digging into that for some type of yummies. <laughs> it 
some currants here too. We're seeing currants and thimbleberries and I wonder why there's so many Bigfoot that's sightings a here. Trail that's used a lot. Yeah, it looks like a runoff trail too in the wet season. Look, there's a milkweed and stuff here too. There is a plethora of food around us. If I had to play alone or naked and afraid, this is where I'd want to be dropped off, right in the middle of all this food. <laughs> where we're hiking at is really close to like Glacier National Park and so there's going to be a lot of bears and there's always a chance running into a grizzly bear in these areas. We want to run into a squatch. It's amazing how the Bigfoot sighting hot spots are usually places where there's a lot of bear. Is it misidentification? I don't think so. I think the squatches are coming in and eating the same thing the bears are eating. That's why I, uh, I'm, the, I'm the omnivore side. We've been up here, I keep hearing something on the left side of us. I know, so. You know, it's probably a deer, but I keep hearing something over there. Yeah, I want to show you guys this tree. You ever in a survival situation and need to make a fire. Look at all this moss and old man's beard. The old man's beard's the stuff that's the lighter color. And that's supposedly one of the best tinders to use if it's dry. And usually it grows underneath pine branches and stuff. And so it's sheltered from moisture a little bit. Yeah. It's great for a tinder bundle. <laughs> you are in the jungle. <laughs> You're in a Montana jungle. We're still surrounded by thimbleberries, but most of them have been eaten. Something laid down right there. Probably a berry, probably ate in here all day and took a nappy. <laughs> Right here, too. Something laid down right here, too. Something heavy. Yeah. Something like elk size or something, or bear size. Yeah. Looks more like bear size to me, mm -hmm. though. Not haven't seen any bear scat yet, but there's a lot of places that can poo without a seeing. Wow, look how tall everything's getting. This trips you out when the vegetation the ground vegetation starts getting taller than you yeah you know because you know you can walk right up on something without seeing it or it's seeing you know mm -hmm. something's over there It's muddy right here, so I think we're close to a spring. Did you hear it over here too?
something hid from us in there. Or being careful to where we don't see it. I heard it. You know, it's more than likely a deer in here. That's a little, a little bit humid, isn't it? Something walking over in that direction. There's things everywhere. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this forest is loaded full of uh, animals, deer, and then up above us, we already seen some uh, some big horn sheep, mountain goats. We're gonna keep looking for anything squatchy. It's always a needle in a haystack, even if you go to where a Bigfoot is seen. I mean, if you think about it, the Patterson Gimlin site, that was 47 years ago, and it's been crawling with people every year, and especially lately. And, you know, they never see anything. It's almost like lightning striking. I mean, maybe it'll strike again there, maybe it'll strike again here
Yeah, Montana's having a drought right now. Hey, there's a snap off. There was one back there too. I never pay them much attention unless they're in a unless there's a lot of them in a small area. I think sometimes a Bigfoot will uh, mark his territory for rifle males and breeding females showing how big and strong he is you know they'll go in and they'll snap off a bunch of three to five inch saplings in like an acre area just a display of strength and power and of course they reach up on the tree as high as they can and snap them and some of them snap as high as 12 feet I've seen and you know other seven or eight but bears will sometimes uh climb trees and, and mess around and snap them i mean i've seen the videos of bears playing so can't blame everything on bigfoot but i do think it's one of their their habits here's another snap off it's an old one you can see where it snap is it's quite worn Feet from the last time. That's three of them. And that one looks about to be 10 feet up, I would say. Here, I'll put it behind me. That's probably double my height. Maybe 11 feet, 12 feet, 10 feet, I don't know. All right. That's not as big footy as I like. I like I like footprints and hair. And the siding would be ideal, of course. I've known of a few people. My uh, dad and uncle have both had two sidings. They were both with each other on both of them, and the one they were with three other people no it was a lot more than that that was four more people because it was my grandparents two of my uncles and my aunt so five more people so you know i get discouraged oh man i might do this all my whole life and not get a sighting and of course it's even harder to get that sighting on camera if you get one but knowing people personally that have had two you know come on why can't I have one? <laughs> Looks like some storm clouds coming in. Hopefully get some rain up here. Montana needs it. I found what looks like the beginning of a structure here in this Bigfoot siding location. And, uh, you know, I'm a thousand miles away from my main research area, but they're the same. You know, look, they relocated uh, two different... Uh, there's a third right there. There's a third? Okay. Look, and here's even like a... A stick for uh, wood cracking and stuff right next to a structure. Here's here's one that's laying here. It looks like they're getting ready to put that one into place. Uh huh. But look, this one's been re relocated, and they got a host tree, a pine, just like back at home. And uh, they like to um, set them up. I notice the southeast side of the tree is where most of them will be, um, but south west whatever and there's another one starting right there let's see if this one looks like it's the freshest relocation and they shoved that down into the ground about four inches and this one over here that let me show you guys up in the tree the tops of them up there
yeah, we don't know if the coincidences are adding up, but you know, it's Bigfoot sighting area, and uh, in the last hundred yards, we have found uh, three snap-offs. You know, and all of them are like suspect, whatever. They could be natural or whatever, but there's three of them in a row, and then we come upon this little structure that we showed you. You know, um, I do like seeing the big structures where they have eight, nine, fifteen of them. They've relocated, but there's three in those two trees and it looks like one stage to put up there at some point in time and uh it's close to a it's close to a trail that, that people use and sometimes it maybe they think they're sending a warning saying hey you know this is my spot you guys just stay on the trail so they're doing the snap offs and the structures on either side of the trail kind of telling us hey please stay on the trail we'll give you that but the rest of this is ours Wow, did you hear that? All right. All right, we're probably going to hike a few more miles in here and then maybe we'll make our way back slowly before it gets dark. Kind of followed an animal trail back into this area. I heard snapping back that way. Yeah, there's something back there. Let's walk up into this other clearing. You know, we've been finding suspect Bigfoot signs and we've heard something on our left the most part. Yeah, it's getting closer. Is there? Whoa. Right there. See the tip of it? Way down there? Oh, right there. Look at my finger. Oh, in there. Right there. Let's see if I can get it to show up on camera. Everything's covered in moss. It makes it hard to... Oh, that one. Yeah, that one's about seven, eight feet off the ground. Back in there, and there's the end of it. So there's four of them in the style they do, and... Hell, you know what? That could be one of the... That's about the same diameter as one of the little logs in the structure. Yeah, it is. That structure isn't big enough for me. No. I really like to see, you know, seven, eight relocated logs. Whoa. I probably talked right over it. I heard a vocalization. Back in there. Just right here. I know a lot of these snap offs have bigger growth forest above them. You know what I mean? They've got all this above them, yet they still get snapped off under all that. It's, it tells me it's not wind, and uh, they're going to keep the weight of the snow off of them. There's another one we just walked past. Yeah, there is. There's a whole host of snap-offs here, folks. 
This one's in a clearing, so this one easily could have been snow. It's not going to be wind, though. I'm not going to get wind in the thick of trees like this. We hear water and we still hear something walking around over that direction. We left the um, tr the small trail that we're following. We've left it and gone out into that stuff, but this stuff is starting to turn swampy on us. And as much as I'd like to get Bigfoot, I'm not willing to hike in swamp. Yes, we will. We've done it tons. <laughs> when we've, yeah, when we've absolutely had to. But it's not my preferred method. There's another snowfall. There's a storm coming in. It's getting dark. I know. Let's just go a little further. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it is getting, it's getting late. I wish I would have had my sandals. This would be fun to stand in. I know. I want to, but then I'll be wet. I have a good pair of hiking sandals, but I thought that we might be climbing and stuff on this hike, so I brought my hiking shoes. You want to go up that way? Or you want to go that way? Up by the river or into the forest further? Oh. There's What's... a trail that goes right there too. Yeah, there is, isn't there? It's more of an animal trail. Alright, well, let's go down that one a little ways. Oops. <laughs> I try so hard and then I still step in the water. <laughs> Yeah, the sun's getting close to the horizon. We'll be heading back soon and we'll keep an eye on our left side, which will be our right side. Because that's where we've been hearing something moving around. You always hope it's not a bear and think it's a deer. And you want it to be a Bigfoot. <laughs> yeah, the thingy. yeah, the trail splits in two different directions here. One goes into a forest and one goes into a burn area. Yeah. I want to go out into the burn area a little ways. That usually attracts animals, believe it or not. They produce a lot of resources, so yeah. We're gonna go look in this old burn area for any sign of Bigfoot. I think Montana's a beautiful country. You know, another extension of the Rocky Mountains. I love Bigfooting in Utah, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana. Hell, hopefully one day I'll end up in the Rocky Mountains in Canada. I'm damn close though. If we could uh, go across the mountaintops. Whoa. Yeah, I heard that. That was loud. That's crazy. Huh. 
Uh-huh. Look, a little bit of snow. You know, we're late into August and there's already, I mean, already, there's still, or maybe already, snow on some of the peaks up here. Oh yeah, storm clouds, and it's getting late. There's still something to do her right. That's bizarre. You still hearing something walking around? I heard something too. Whoa. What was that? I don't know. It's whatever's been walking off that way on us. Whoa. Can't believe something's that close and we haven't been able to see it. Why can't we see it? It's right here. There was something that made noise on that closer to us this direction than the other. Well, there's an animal on either side of us. That's pretty cool. Kind of unnerving. Yeah, the one that was off this way is really startling. Listen to that pop. Something whistled and then popped. What? It was like a click. <laughs> Here, look, in the fire area, here's a, just a one-piece structure. I know that's more than likely a coincidence, a tree tipped over right there. Did you hear that? Yeah. Something just cracked a tree right back in there. Jenny brought a camera. My my battery dies. We'll switch to hers. Oh, over there. Just swung around over there. I can't see over well, the trees. It's thick forest. This is like the biggest clearing we've ever been into. On this particular hike is what I mean. Well, we can't see it. And something's been on one side of us the whole time. Now there, we hear animals on both sides. We've got to head back. I mean, let's see if they follow us back. You know, we got a couple miles to hike before it gets see. dark. I don't see why they wouldn't. Before it gets completely dark. Unless... Yeah, I didn't even, I didn't even bring a headlamp. I didn't plan on being out after dark when we started this hike. All right. I wish gonna... I was like five feet taller. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, like Bigfoot. Yeah, 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 you think about it. He can see. That's, that's one advantage of living in the forest is having a little bit of height. Like, like, a, like a moose or like a Bigfoot. You get to see it over this, this type of brush. Hear that clicking? Yeah. It sounded like a mouth. They're, they're, it's like clicking. Two sticks together. Click, click, click. There's something back over there. There's something over there. Yeah, I know. I hear it. Heard the click over there. Now movement over there.
my mouth popped out of it, made it get all quiet. The movement stopped and it quit making the noises. Yep. Sometimes when you try to make noises at it, they just don't like it. Yeah, we found some more thimble berries. I ate a couple of them. But, you know, when you find uh, berries in a bear location, that means bears. And we just come up on some bear scat. <laughs> It's oh. not fresh by any means, but that is bear activity. Here's a log that's been moved just not more than probably 10 minutes ago. We're on our way back from our hike. We've been hearing something skirting us and we've gotten to the clearing. We heard um, almost like rock clacks, mouth pops, uh, movement on both sides of us, even a little stomping. And then uh, this log has been moved since we- And broken half. Yeah, it wasn't, wasn't like that on our way in. I remember seeing it. We've been watching for structures and snap-offs and stuff, so. But you know what? This could very well be like a badger or a bear dug it back to get grubs and stuff underneath of it. So. Yeah, this part of Montana is just thick of wildlife. Reminds me of the Uintas back at home. We got a lot of wildlife back there. We found a spot where something dug and then climbed the mountain. Dug right here. And then started walking. Actually dug a little bit there. Walked up that way up into the mountain, and uh, it really looks like bear activity to me. Not a very big bear, I mean, not a grizzly bear. It looks like probably black bear activity. You know, it makes you wonder, you know. Oh, and here's a little bit of moss dug up. Actually, it dug that up from up there. I tossed it back up there. Yeah, something under that moss it liked. But you know, it makes you wonder, you know, if Bigfoot's an omnivore, you know, if he comes up and he Smell what the bear smelt right there. Was he what he dig right there? Pull that up. I don't know. It's got to take a lot of food to support something as big as what people say Bigfoot is. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Another one. A couple of screams. I heard some screams right by this snap off. Mm. Just found another snap off. I'm gonna film through this tall stuff. This tall stuff makes Jenny and I nervous because, you know, this is up to our shoulders and some of it's above our head. So it makes it real easy for us to walk up on something. You could just stand up at any time. And because we are in bear country, we want to make a little bit of noise. Would really suck to sneak up on a sow grizzly or a sow black bear with a couple of first year cubs. <laughs> We'd be food. The littler those cubs are, usually the meaner she is. Kind of like me with my kids.
wonder if it's these plants that make it so humid in here. Well, there's a lot of creeks around, a lot of lakes around. Springs. Yeah, we walked through some mud. We found a spring earlier. That's where we heard a lot of movement was around that spring. Some large animal was in there making a little bit of noise but being careful to hide from us. And we'll walk past that spring again. Yeah, look how high the vegetation is, you guys. Keep our eye open for anything big footy. Yes, it's coming towards you. Oh, I don't know if the camera cut it. There was a squirrel where I'm trying to film. But yeah, something's been ripping into this log. Here's a piece of it. There's another piece of it. But yeah, that's bear and badger and, and this. There's quite a bit of wolverines from what I understand in the north part of Montana, so we may be looking at a possible wolverine activity. No discernible footprints. It's just too dry and hard packed to get some good footprints in most of this that we've been looking at. We have found some parts on the trail where the trail's dry enough it'll make a powder puff footprint, but we've only been finding a horse. Looks like people have been riding horses up here this summer. I'm pretty sure we're near a spring because for no reason at all there's a muddy section of uh, trail you can see uh, where we walked through this mud on the way in and of course we checked it for Bigfoot and any other type of animal. But anyway we heard an animal moving around and being careful not to be seen on our way in that's by this spring. I'm guessing there's a water source right off in there into the forest and this thick stuff. Look how thick it is. I would need a machete to go back to where I heard that animal. You know, a lot of people are like, well, God, you heard something up in there. No, 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 why don't you go up in there? Well, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I don't have my machete. And, uh, so yeah, that's some thick stuff. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, we just noticed an animal trail, Some, a fresh one, something just come through, right? Look at that, it's a big flat-footed, It's. I think it's bear. Look how big it is, though. So. It went up into these thimble berries. It may be laying back there yeah, looking at us. Yeah. I just want to okay. get closer to where the footprint is. Maybe it does look like bear. That looks like a bigger one than what was digging back there. This may be the one that dug into that log. That's pretty fresh. Yeah, that's today something. Went back in here. And I'm sure it crossed here not. Yeah, it looks like it come through here. Yeah, I'm sure it's here for the thimble berries. Well, we've seen two signs of bear, and we've heard stuff on both sides of the trail of us, and we also saw a deer earlier, so those may be the culprits that we've heard in the forest. Ooh, ooh, something crossed right where you stepped out to. Something's just crossed through here. I don't see any footprints. It very well could have been a deer. 
God, this is some thick stuff. Those are good prep pants. The bear ones? Yeah, too bad they weren't bear. I mean, too bad they were bear. <laughs> yeah, too bad it wasn't Bigfoot, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, that's why I didn't spend very much time on the footprint. If it looks like a Bigfoot to me, I'll spend some time on it and f filming it, taking pictures of it, measuring it. But if I know it's another animal, that's not what I'm out for. So I don't spend much time on them usually. Some of these cliffs up above us. We're in a deep canyon. We're in one of those places that uh, Derek wouldn't be able to fly his... Uh, Sophisticated drone. Yeah, with the GPS flight systems and stuff. He wouldn't get us, he wouldn't get six satellite connections here. All right, I'm gonna zoom in up on these cliffs. I see a tree in a cool location. Let's see if I can get it. There's the biggest tree ball I've ever seen in my life. Look at the tree up there on the cliff by itself. All by myself. <laughs> You seen a, a ball? Look at that big tree ball back there. It's so old that other things are growing up out of it. Looks like a damn hairy Bigfoot, dang it. <laughs> yeah. There's a tree root ball. You've heard they hide behind those? Yeah. I've seen a couple of Bigfoot sightings where it's actually been hiding behind the root ball. And looking up over the top or at the side. Yeah, I've heard of uh, a couple of sightings in Montana where they've done that. And a couple of them in California. Yeah, there's a woodpecker. Something's in there. In this tree tapping. Look, there's an animal trail. Another fresh one, something just come through here today. Smashing down vegetation and stuff. That's amazing, you can actually hear the animal in the tree tapping. Do woodpeckers live? Yeah, woodpeckers will live in uh, dead trees. Lots of animals will. I heard something down the trail. Do you hear something walking over there? Yeah, right there. There's something walking right there. Hey, something walked. Someone crossed the trail right here. Stepped on that. Went off that way. We may, we may have heard what crossed right here. You can hear an angry squirrel. I think we stood here too long for his liking. He doesn't like it. <laughs> Let me see if I can get those cliffs over there. I'm going to zoom in with the camera. Look at the beauty. Alright, let's get going back. It's getting dark. <laughs> 